Stephanie Kuntz, the director of research for the Council on Contemporary Families, says it's worrisome if people in the movement convince young women that depending on a male breadwinner will solve their work-related frustrations without considering the risks that a man might lose his job, die early, mistreat them, or abandon them. And while I can completely get behind that, I don't think it's for everyone to always plan for failure. We shouldn't just blanket statement say that everyone should always be financially prepared for any disaster when disaster may never come. But I also do see women get locked into unhealthy marriages because they're being financially controlled. Over 50% of marriages in the U.S. end in divorce, and I can assure you that nobody's sitting on their wedding day and thinking, oh, we're planning to get divorced. I chose to stitch this because this is exactly me when I was 26 or 27. I had two young kids. I would remember walking into a thrift store of all places, and I saw one of my mom's old friends, and she was like, oh, how are you? They're so cute. What are you up to these days? Like, what are you doing for a living? And I was like, this is what I'm doing for a living. I'm staying home with the kids. And she was like, oh, and like she had this cautionary like look on her face as she very judgy said to me, well, just be really careful. You know, you don't want to be in a situation where you're reliant on someone. Make sure that you don't have any gaps in your resume and you're, you know, you're keeping your skill set up. Well, clearly I wasn't. I had just said I was staying home with my kids. So I am just offended. I'm like, um, well, that's not necessary. I mean, we have a really great relationship and we're really happily married. We'll be married forever. Five years later, I really had to eat my hat, so to speak, because I was miserably married, like in a miserable situation where I could not get out of this marriage. Now, I had given 15 years of my life to this man and I had poured all of my talent and all of my energy into his business, building his business, because I was staying home with the kids and This was the way we were making an income together. What I wish that I could tell myself back then was shake, shake, shake. Listen to the lady who's a little bit older than you. Maybe she has a life experience that you don't know yet. And that's why you see so many older women entering the workforce when their kids go off to college and their husband decides that they want to end the relationship now. And he's going off with a young secretary or whoever. And now they are having to start their career, career, we're one because they've given their whole lives to stay at home and to propel his career. So he's flying high, has the great career, making fantastic money. And now she might be getting some money in child support or in alimony if she's lucky. So I wanted to, for us to like really face a well-described argument from the other side, because it's easy to talk about the problems with contingency planning. And I really want to understand what you guys think about that. But it's also there are also going to be people listening to this who have seen the nightmare scenario on, on the other side. The woman who really is destitute after having given everything to her husband and to this family. This is a very difficult topic. You know, and I think, I think one of the things that I would say, that, and I'm going to hear you guys take after this, but one of the things that isn't really articulated in this clip, um, it's almost like framed as if you could do this contingency plan that's sort of simple on the side, just keep up your resume, <laughs> just like somehow be able to provide for an entire family um, while caring for your children, make sure you have enough education without having too much debt, without while giving yourself to your family as a stay-at-home mom, while making sure that you could easily provide for yourself and maybe all your kids in the event. Like that's not, that, that there are a small percentage of women who might be able to pull that off, but that's a full-time job. Like, like we're in a hyper-competitive capitalist economy. You can't simply say to women that you need to be able to enter the marketplace and be able to compete directly with men. And you're going to be able to do that while taking um, all of this time to focus on your family and have very little engagement for potentially a decade or more in, in the marketplace. Like, in other words, planning for this contingency is likely a full-time job. It's not, it's not a simple thing. I think that's not necessarily been articulated in this clip, but then, then you have to deal with the question that they are really raising, which is, well, is it still worth it in a atmosphere in which divorce is so high? Um, and that probability is, is, is high as well. So April, we'll start with you and kind of go around, but I'm curious, yeah, what did this stir up for you? Well, I remember the first time I even heard this idea was, um, because, uh, at our Christian homeschool co-op, um, one of our daughter, who was probably 16 at the time, her one of her teachers was really getting on her because she wasn't sure if she wanted to go to college. Or, and she said to her, you need to have a contingency plan. Um, 
because that was this this teacher's story. She had gotten married, gotten divorced, and left with no contingency plan, and on her, which was on her second marriage. And so, I was I was really surprised at that, just that mentality. I understand people wanting to like go to college to have a career, but I hadn't heard of having a contingency plan because to me that sounds like you're kind of planning for divorce, like that lady said. But I I feel like j- just so much of all of this goes back to what you believe. Like, what do you believe to be true? What so so if you are someone who um, is trying to live a life surrendered to Jesus and is trying to follow the Bible and um, God and His design and His ways, um, it is my belief that if you end up in this type of a situation, there's a whole lot that has gone wrong. Right. Um, and so providing for yourself financially is perhaps one of the, one of the things that you will have to figure out on that end of things, but there's probably a lot more there that is so, so there's just a lot of this, um, the realities of people's lives and choices and belief systems that I can see how they would end up like this, you know? I d- this woman didn't talk about her belief or anything like that in her in her story, but I feel like so much of it has to be based. Like, what are you basing your life on? What are you basing your decisions on? Who is your life surrendered to? Is it surrendered to your husband in the hopes that he, in 20 years from now, still is attracted to you and wants to provide for you? Um, you know, then that, maybe that's questionable as to whether or not that's actually going to happen. I feel like right. living a life surrendered to Jesus um, and marrying someone who is also living a life surrendered to Jesus, you have a lot more hope in that because it's because through Jesus, we have the tools to combat these things that come up that can lead to 15 years into a marriage, things falling apart. Like there, you can back it up and say, like, if I am surrendering to Jesus um, right now in this moment, when I just had this fight with my husband or I just, and like resentment is building about something because of Jesus and who he is. And because I'm following him, I can take the tools that Jesus has taught me about forgiveness and about, um, love and about, uh, putting others before myself and about, um, taking up my cross daily. I can take those things from Jesus and like apply them to my day that day. I can have victory in that day. And so I feel like if you do that on, and I know we can't, we're not perfect and we don't do that perfectly daily, but if we're just like in a constant state of like, you know, the cycle of desiring to follow Jesus and be surrendered to him and like being our fallen self, but also just continuing to try to follow him, then I would, I believe that there's power in that, in him, not me, but in there's power in his ways. 